I'm Gilgun Kayim. I'm the Director of Arts, Culture and the Creative Economy for the City of Minneapolis. And thank you for coming to our city. We're really, really happy to have you here. We've been working hard all year with the host committee to really activate the word genuine community. We've been trying to figure out what does that mean to us? How, what does that mean to our deep, deep community roots here? What does that mean honestly? So one thing that we've decided to do this year that's rather unusual is to actually have the opening reception inside of a festival that we do annually called Northern Spark. Has anyone heard of the festival Northern Spark, anyone? Awesome. Great. So you know that it starts at 9 and it goes until 2 a.m. This year it's for two nights, tonight and tomorrow night. And it's going to be in three places. It'll be in the commons where the reception tent will be. So the opening reception will be in a tent in the commons in the middle of Northern Spark. I'm thrilled to have commissioned a new sculpture for the opening um, by Indigenous Roots. So you come and celebrate with us and stay with us. Get on the light rail, which will be free for both nights. And you can then head over to Franklin Avenue and hang out with NACTI and the Native American community. And then you can go over to Rondo to the Halley Q. Brown Center and hang out with that historically black community in that. So it will be an amazing experience. We invite you to join us. I know I'm going to be really exhausted, but very happy. One thing you should know is please be prepared. We have maps on your chairs. Please plan your night. Wear comfortable shoes. I'm sounding like a mum now. Wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> Raincoat, come prepared. And also know that at 6.30, meet downstairs in the lobby because we'll be walking over to the commons. It's a short, flat walk. For those that need transportation, there will also be buses available, but it will begin at 7. So please join us. We'll be thrilled to have you. So with that... I am now thrilled to introduce to you Council Member, um, Council Vice President Andrea Jenkins. So, uh, Andrea Jenkins is an award winning writer, performance artist, poet, and transgender activist. She is the first African American openly trans woman to be elected to office in the United St States. Help me welcome Council Member and Vice President Andrea Jenkins. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. <laughs> Prince Rogers Nelson, hometown. Good afternoon, American for the Arts. How's everybody doing today? My name is Andrea Jenkins, and as the Vice President of the Minneapolis City Council, I welcome you to our beautiful city. But before I jump deep into my remarks, I always acknowledge that wherever I am in the United States, it's important to recognize that we stand on stolen land, yeah? In a country built by stolen labor, right? It's always, it's critical to, to keep this in mind as context as we work to restore and redress those inequities that continue to hold us back from reaching our fullest potential. So having attended and organized uh, many national and regional gatherings such as this one, I can guarantee you that you will have an amazing time here in Minneapolis and the greater Twin Cities. Our community takes pride in creating an environment of welcoming, energetic, and engaged hospitality. In fact, some of our arts institutions like Pillsbury House Theater or the Mixed Blood Theater call it radical hospitality. 
Yeah. And so, so I just want to be sure to, to shout out some of my colleagues that may be in the room. I think uh, Council Member Alondra Cano is here. Alondra. There she is. And I know that uh, Council Member Kevin Reich served on the host committee with myself, and Council Member Jeremiah Ellison was here um, yesterday, um, as well as myself. I also want to acknowledge former City Council Member Ralph Remington. Uh, once a Council Member, always a Council Member. There's Ralph in the back there. Ralph was the founder of Pillsbury House uh, Theater, and, and some of you joined us on the, the tour of my community, uh, the 38th and Chicago um, community, and um, so if you were at Pillsbury House, Ralph was the founder of that theater, um, uh, national, nationally acclaimed uh, equity professional theater, which still is producing amazing work. And so, man, I just feel so honored standing here um, knowing that so many of my artistic community friends and comrades are presenting here. Shout out to Dessa and Amy for uh, doing the damn thing. I'm loving the new hair, Dessa. It's hot. <laughs> um, Oscar Lee. Ifra, Mansoor, Roxanne, Anna, uh, Roxanne Anderson, and Anna Meyer, who, by the way, uh, were selected to be our head creative city-making artist for our census campaign called We Count. As the city council sponsor for our Complete Count Committee, I cannot stress enough to you all how important it is to make sure that everyone is counted for the census. And the bogus attempt to add the question, are you a US citizen? It's just a scare tactic. And we must ensure that everybody is counted. I mean, what are, if you answer no, what are they gonna do? <laughs> You're still here in the United States. So please encourage everybody to fill out the, citizen, the census. The community that I represent boasts over 13% of all the working artists in Minneapolis, and they call it home. So as a poet and artist myself, I want to share a little poem with you called Black Day. And the only thing that you really need to know about this poem, um, I guess two things you need to know about this poem. It was an actual day that actually happened and that the president that is referenced in this poem is not the president that is currently serving in the White House today. <laughs> Black Day. She is dangerously happy. The day is beautiful. There has never been a better time or place to be alive, she thinks. There is no life more perfect than her own, and she is right. Carol Masso. Yesterday was a black day, not as in dark matter or consumer spending Black Friday, Though some may call City Hall a black hole, I wake up every day and go to this black hole. I have to protect my soul. But this wasn't that day. No dark clouds blocking out the sun. This was a black day as in black people's issues were front and center. As and as in a time to make systemic change happen for those disabused by white supremacy. As in a city trying to make amends for the sins of its fathers by creating a racial equity agenda. As in a black president coming to town to shake hands with the common folks. 
as in Professor John Powell riding in on his black horse seeking reparations for the black homeowners who lost their fortunes. A black day as in the first black director for the Community Planning and Economic Development Agency was nominated by the mayor. A black day as in the Prince Hall Masons were negotiating building affordable senior housing in the community. Black days don't occur very often in City Hall, sometimes not at all. But as the president says, it's easy to be cynical, but hope is better. Stay hopeful. Thank you.